Yeah, second thing, I think you see the billboard campaign. Uh, when we hear, when IDO introduced Somali, we say, yes, we are Somali, we are American, we are Muslim, we are Minnesotans. So we're going to be uh, doing a billboard campaign, and you see in the Minnesota, the highways in Minnesota billboard campaign, where you see a Somali woman, or maybe what we, gonna, what we are planning to do is create a council, a, a council which will take pictures, and the best picture will be used as billboard. This is not necessarily to be this one. Probably Somali doing ice fishing or being in the food of salmon. You know, so the best picture. So there will be a council who will actually uh, decide who wins, which picture wins. So there will be competition for that. But we would like to see some pictures like this. Yes, I'm a Minnesota. I'm wearing my hijab. I'm doing. I'm just being like any other Minnesota youth or white But also, you know, I'm a Somali. I'm a Muslim. So that's an engagement. Um, the third one is the business. Somalis are known uh, for being a business group. So if there are youth who are even not youth who has a business idea, we will invest in a venture factory. We do a venture factory. Part of the profit, 10% of the profit to 20% of the profit, will go to Somali humanitarian, whether it's a, the food track or whether it's a business. It's going to go to Somali. That's how we can be with you. You know, we're in this situation. So we, we invest in you, a percentage of the money will go to humanitarian Somali. Uh, in terms of what we're doing overall, there are four things. I don't want to take more time, but I will open to questions. I would like to hear from you and ask your questions. Four things. What we're doing. A, PR. It's very important. We have to reach out. Since the growth happened, even before the growth happened, we had more than 370 news covered by the different by nationwide as well as international. And Jazeera was there uh, last week. Uh, we were the show. Uh, the zero was there, um, um, so uh, the, the CPS is coming on Monday. They'll be there with us for two days covering this about the growth of Somali guys going to be. Before, we used to have a lot of negative news about Somali America, right? Media used to focus on 1% of the Somali people, that's what I always say. But they never could you know, uh, uh, focus on the 99% of the Somalis who are well educated, hard working, supporting their families in here, but also their back home. So, we have to bring in those on the table. We don't know. I mean, the mainstream media didn't discover this area. But we discovered that we have to tell. That is the whole story. All the 370 plus news coverage for the past few weeks and a month, all were positive, 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 positive. No negative news was there. You can see Google, you can see it on neighbor stations, you can see it on ARC, how they have covered it. Uh, this morning, uh, in terms of the news, I was just at the airport trying to buy it, and this came up. Uh, and they interviewed me, I know that they interviewed me, but I wasn't expecting it to be doing on the front page of the Star Tribune, the largest uh, newspaper uh, in Minnesota. And I'll give you each opportunity to take a look at the front of the last week. Yeah, I'm here every day. It's a newspaper, the local newspaper. Mm -hmm. the newspaper. Yeah. There's Somali newspaper, there's Somali family. So, yeah. the media is over it. Yeah. The other thing what we have done is advocacy. What's Somalia, what's lacking is, if you know, the, our U.S. government lifted the ban just for the past few days. And how, how then did they lift it? Actually, we engaged with the elected officials. Our Somali guys were engaged with the Senator Franklin. Our Franklin came into Minnesota and he met with our office. And there was a young Somali student among the team, and I was there at that time. And she emotionally addressed the issue why the U.S. government is not looking at that in Somalia, particularly the southern area, particularly even the area that ARC was there already. Because we could not be able to get a funding from the U.S. government in Mogadishu, although we know that in Mogadishu we were under the transition of the federal government area. So, with the help of that Somali student, her name is Shino, she's done it tremendous. She made uh, every one of us emotionally cry, including the senator. And he said that he was going to call uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton. And he did call. And he did report it. In a few days, he the, the equation changed. And the US government is going to be this event. So that is how much the community has the power that they want to do. So part of the things we want to do with them, and we are doing this advocacy. Uh, petition also. What we're doing is petition. We want to show the world that there's one million people 
who votes and who shows the wealth, and there's one million people who cares about the humanitarian situation in Somalia, who cares about Somalia. So each one of you will have an opportunity to read and sign. Uh, be part of the one million people who are showing the wealth that there are people who care about Somalia and Somalia and the Somali humanitarian situation. And number three, fundraising. We did, we did a lot of fundraising this week. Uh, we had a samosa. You want to talk about it? That was your idea. So I had I was lucky enough to taste samosa a while ago and um, I know the idea did not come from me. <laughs> it probably came from this guy right here. But basically with that what Sayyid was talking about earlier is what is the best way to bring people together in food, of course. Food and music, you know, but food <laughs> especially. And so what we did is we, the, the council and um, our organization, we got together and we decided that um, let's have fun with it. Let's, let's blow this up. Let's allow the greater community to get a taste of this new story um, that the Somali Muslim community is creating. And so they created, they organized the Somali, uh, the Sambusa cook-off. And so it was actually just July 9th. And um, we hosted it at this really cool open space where we could host up to it was like 400 people. But actually, I swear it was like it was a week before the event was even taking place, and we were completely booked. Completely booked. We didn't know what we were going to do because we had so many people that were wanting to come with us, which was so exciting. We were so excited to have this many people want to be a part of something so great because it's really you're coming together around something that's fun, but you're kind of, you're allowing yourself the opportunity to build bridges, to get to know people that you might not have gotten to know before, to kind of cross cultural boundaries. And so um, the cook-off involved five of the top uh, Simbusa chefs in the Twin Cities area. And so we actually, um, it was four local Somali businesses that were represented, um, Afro Deli and Safari Restaurant, um, International Food Manufacturing, which is like a distribution company, um, and then also a catering company that was owned by five women. So there's people from different backgrounds, but um, they had their own businesses, and it was a great chance for us to promote their businesses within the greater community and at the event. There was also a woman who was a home cook who was a little nervous about it, but we convinced her that she would be absolutely awesome. So she was. And so the night of the event, they each cook had a station, and they served sambusas to all the people that came. So imagine serving that many sambusas, and they were bite-sized, because obviously you can't eat five full sambusas. <laughs> and so the guests went through, and they tasted all the sambusas, and then they got their chance to vote on their favorite sambusa. Well, we had a panel of celebrity judges, Mayor Ryback, the city of Minneapolis mayor, was on our panel of judges. Um, if you listen to NPR, National Public Radio, Minnesota has their like Minnesota Public Radio, and their top food critic, um, Lynn Rosario Casper, who actually I think is on the Splendid Table if you listen to that. Either way, she was one of the judges. And then um, Hibo Nura, who, um, right, her, you guys know who she is? Yeah, okay. Um, and her friend, and Eric Kahin. So those were our judges, right? So there's four judges. And each one of them cast their vote on this, like, on stage for the whole crowd. And then the audience's vote counted as the fifth judge, who was actually the tiebreaker, <laughs> believe it or not. So it was a really exciting night. And um, people just had so much fun with it, you know. And it was just a chance for us to do something fun that had a great amount of impact. Through that, through that event, we raised over $50,000, which is a significant amount, and you guys know it goes so far for people that are struggling to mind. So that's the point that, like, all the efforts that you guys have been doing to, to raise funds, you know, you can have fun with it, you can do car washes, you can do these wonderful, awesome things that bring people together. And then, you know, if you have the media covering it, like it says, it, says it, it tells a new story, it tells a positive story. Summer bash of the Simplicity Cookout. I'm glad it's over.